Now, please welcome Chairman and CEO Club Med, Henri Giscard d'Estaing, and Vice President and Editor-in-Chief, Afar, Julia Cosgrove. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, we were just speaking backstage about Club Med and how many of us back there have this kind of idea of it as the where all of the cool kids went in the 70s and 80s with their families. And I grew up in Berkeley and New York, and I would do house exchanges in Cambridge and very boring church tours all over France. No, no, nothing wrong with France. Um, and I had so? friends who would go to Club Med and have the most amazing times. And so when I, I heard that I would be interviewing Henri today, I sort of said, oh, Club Med. I haven't thought about it in a long time. Um, and it was really interesting to kind of dive into all that you've done um, in sort of repositioning the brand. Um, Henri has been president and CEO since 2003. He's been with the company since 1997. And he's very focused. The goal of the company is to be the global leader of upscale, all-inclusive vacations. Um, and so we're going to have a nice, casual chat here. Um, you know, you have this iconic travel brand that um, has this very rich 65-year heritage. Um, I believe that you were the first in Cancun, and you actually built the airport there. Um, you, no, we built the Punta Cana one. Punta Cana, okay. We are not too much in the airport business, hopefully. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, <laughs> the, the resorts really kind of pioneered the all-inclusive experience for many years and for many travelers. And while the brand has high awareness today, I think many people who may be in the audience remember it for what it used to be. So tell us what it is today with 12,000 global employees and 70 resorts and how you kind of differentiate from your competition. Julia, maybe we could do a little exercise before, before I try to answer that. It's just check the awareness. Who has ever heard about Club Med? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> More difficult for me. Who has been to Club Med? Better than expected. Not bad, no. <laughs> Even though it, it, it gives me great potential. Yes. So that's what I would try to do. <laughs> Club Med was created, as you said, uh, more than 65 years ago, has been a pioneer, has been a leader, has been imitated. The market has changed, and we had to change. Oops. We probably were, were a bit late in doing so, but that's life. Now we have catched up, and uh, we have deeply changed uh, the, the company, and more important, the offer. We have moved the whole offer upscale, meaning that we invested more than $1.5 billion to upgrade our facilities. We closed half of our resorts, because they were not able to be sufficiently upscale, and we have moved to uh, family, affluent family vacations uh, offer and active couples. And we are totally focused on that. Mm -hmm. And I would say the last change is that we have increased our global footprint. Uh, now, nowadays, uh, we have resorts all around the world and we are welcoming customers from all around, all around the world. Yeah, and I noticed, um, I mean, you really are opening. You're not necessarily focusing on one continent or one region. Openings in the French Alps, openings in the Maldives, openings in China. Um, I, you know, the, the thing that Afar is deeply focused on and, and where I think a lot of people in this room think that travel is going um, is towards experiential. and. I know that you're a brand that's been about experiences from the very beginning. Um, and so I'm wondering how you're focused on this right now and, and on this move and on experiential as sort of changing for consumers. We are happy there that the, the demand, the market is going in our direction because it's fair to say that we are truly experiment, experimental, experiential 
brand and vacation experience. You are right to say also that uh, experience tend to change. What is an experiential holiday nowadays for affluent families and active couples? First, disconnect to reconnect. People nowadays live in an extremely tense world, and when they are in the holidays, especially with their family, they want to have this disconnection, but to reconnect. Reconnect with themselves, reconnect with obviously their loved ones, their kids, the family. They usually go in groups with the grandparents. So experience is all about trying new things, doing amazing things, which for us goes from flying trapeze, water ski, uh, discovering obviously in an original way the surroundings. It is what we have created in our Punta Cana resort with Cirque du Soleil to have the only opportunity to uh, try uh, circus activities you would never try elsewhere. It is also about relaxing. So we have created in our resorts what we call Zen Oasis, which are quiet places for adult only. Mm -hmm. So the kids enjoy the mini clubs facilities, are looked after by our GOs, while the parents can be by themselves. Mm -hmm. So experiential is making every member of the family happy during its holidays. And so they can do separate things during the day, but then come together exactly. at night or whenever. Exactly. Yeah. So paint a picture just for this audience of today's Club Med consumer, if you will. So today's, today's Club Med consumers are, let's say, affluent families and, and active couples who are looking to a special experience for their vacation. Mm -hmm. They want to be in the best locations in the world. Mm -hmm. Strangely enough, we are not so big. We have nearly only 70 resorts. It's not because we can't be bigger. It's simply because we are extremely strict mm -hmm. in the selection of our resorts. We are always in the best place, and we try to be, before the others, in the future best place of the world. Mm -hmm. Second, they have space. For me, nowadays, space is luxury, mm -hmm. and we always want to have a large space, also in order to give the possibility of having experiences. Mm -hmm. And they want to be in an atmosphere which is different from their daily life. Mm -hmm. It's what we call Club Med spirit, mm -hmm. and it's what is brought by our geos, those uh, gracious organizers who are playing a very special role to look after the kids, to uh, give you experience on sports, to make you happy all along the day. And they're also helping to amplify the individual resort brands out to the world through social media, etc. Sort of sounds like a dream job for a 25-year-old, actually. Ah, it's, a, it's a fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. we, we call it a, a life experience to, to learn life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so proud, all around the world, when I go in every place from financial institutions to uh, government bodies or whatever, I was always someone who would say, I've been a geo, yeah. I've been a geo. And to be honest, they are usually the best. Yeah. It's a nice circle of alumni, I'm sure. Um, millennials, which I heard there was a panel on yesterday. I'm sure there will be more of them. It's the, the word to hate or to love. Um, your customers of tomorrow, some of them are your customers now. By some accounts, I'm a millennial, if you count 1980 in, your, in, in the uh, scale there. I have a child, husband. We both work too much. Are we your customers of tomorrow? Definitely. Or today. And frankly, today. Mm -hmm. Millennials covers obviously a wide range, in, uh, in fact, now of age and way of life. We have, I think, to be always cautious in not over segmenting uh, in a, either con uh, customers or what you do, uh, because mm -hmm. you overcomplicate things which are some, in a way simple. Mm -hmm. Millennials are some people who are open to the world who are in a very heavy pressure, much greater pressure than their parents, because life is tougher. Mm -hmm. And in a way, their need to have vacation is even more important. Then I would make, obviously, a distinction between the, the millennials' family, right. which is a, our core target, and frankly, 
they are with us. Right. Because when you have a baby, when you have a young kid, first, you can go in holidays outside school holidays, right. but you want to have someone who can look after your baby. Mm -hmm. We are taking babies from four months mm -hmm. in some of our resorts. And you want to have a special experience. Mm -hmm. If you are just single or, or a couple, you may want to visit a city or to have a trek, but at the time, you also want to stay a bit on a beach right. and, and enjoy. Right, and so that's what you offer. Exactly. Um, what about grandparents, parents, and children's sort of multi-generational trend and, and how Club Med fits into that? I imagine it fits in quite well. It's <coughs> a major trend. If I would have to say, what are the major trends nowadays? Mega trends, multi-generational. Mm -hmm which is probably coming from many factors, the aging, uh, but also the fact that you are in best, good health and good shape for longer, longer times, uh, people marrying later, whatever. It's a, it's a mega trend. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an interesting one and a difficult one. What are those multi-generation families nowadays? Most of them are more or less global. Right. They have one kid working or living or studying in another country. Uh, they have families who have different structure uh, because the family is not as it were. And uh, so, we, so you have to reconcile different expectations, different lifestyle, different locations. Mm -hmm. And then what is the purpose? Make each of them happy. Which isn't that different from trying to make American travelers happy, Russian travelers happy, Indian travelers happy. I mean, you're, you're trying to make a lot of people happy, as many people in this room. Do. Yeah, you have, you have to be based on an organization which recognize the individual. Mm -hmm. So we're not selling a room, we're selling an experience. And we're not selling an experience for everybody. We're selling an experience for each of our customer, thanks to those geos mm -hmm. who are looking individually after them. And thanks to the organization of the facilities, which allows each member of the family to enjoy. Something. When you go in an in a, in a amusement park, the kids will be very happy. After two days, the parents are exhausted. <laughs> That's basic. If you go in a luxury boutique, the parents will be happy. After two days, the, the kid says, Hey, Dad, ma'am, where, where do we go? <laughs> we want to go away. Right. What we try to do is reconcile that. Right. And probably the facilities and organizations allow it. Right. Um, and more than a decade ago, under your leadership, Club Med moved away from this more sort of one-size-fits-all, more mass proposition. So how focused on the luxury market are you? And I'd like you to talk a little bit about what luxury, which is a word like millennial, but um, is overused in my opinion, what that means to club men. We have, you are right, totally changed. And we have, because when you want to be truly upscale, you need to have in your offer products which forces you try to be really the best. Mm -hmm. So we have created within our range something, things we call exclusive collection, which are truly five or six stars type of uh, resorts, but which are usually within our res big, bigger resort or next to it. We have created villas in Mauritius, chalets in the French Alps. We have created in the, in the Maldives a second island. We were the very first in the Maldives, but the second island with villas, each of them having their swimming pool, their butler. So we have at least the knowledge of doing the very, very best. But let's make it simple. We will never be gold and marble. Mm -hmm. Because it's not what our customers are expecting. You're not Trump? <laughs> sorry, I'm not sorry. gold and marble. Uh, <laughs> and, and because we believe that luxury nowadays especially for our target group, obviously not for, maybe for everybody. What is the rarest thing? It's time. Mm -hmm. So it's the use of time which is important. What is the rarest thing in big towns, big cities all around the world from Shanghai to here? It's space. What is the rarest thing? It's beautiful nature. Mm -hmm. 
I look myself at our gardens. So this, for me, for us, is luxury. Right, right. Um, what trends that, that are kind of happening right now, this is your crystal ball moment, do you think will still be with us 10 years from now? I know you're investing pretty heavily in VR, um, and so I'm, I'm curious if you could talk about that and about what you're doing in that area specifically. Let's say in our uh, <clears throat> fabulous world and uh, business, obviously uh, digital and mobile digital is, is changing it. And, it. and it's changing it at an incredible speed. Mm -hmm. I think that what will remain is what is truly useful to enhance your vacations in my business of vacation and happiness. And we should always think, when we look at digital development, is it truly helping our guests to be more happy when they are in vacation? Mm -hmm. But vacation is before and after. Right. A, a successful vacation is something you, you have pleasure to prepare and obviously which creates memories mm -hmm. that you will share with your family and friends afterwards. And it's there that virtual reality, at least in the first part, is key. If you're able, during the booking process, to make your potential customer experience what he will live, knowing that it is complicated when you are selling an experience, it's probably mm -hmm. easier when you are selling a room, but less interesting, or at least less funny. Mm -hmm. VR for that is for key, and I think is a game changer. And so you think that it's most critical in that sort of planning, anticipatory, I need to, to get my customer to click buy and, and maybe bring them along so they have sort of a preview of, of what their experiences are going to be like before they get there. No doubt there. Mm -hmm. Can we imagine that we could help them to create their own 360 degree film mm -hmm. for then when they are back from the holidays, show it to their friends mm -hmm. or look at them later. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. There's no limit to the technological progress. Right. Um, I think that, you know, just harping on this, this issue of diversity that I think you have a, a beautiful story actually about. I mean, you, for years, you've had this mini United Nations of nationalities working for you, and, and I think that that's a critical kind of value and, and, and mission in a way in, in what you do. How do you deal with just differences between people um, who are coming from all over the world, both, both who work for you and also the guests whom you're serving? To uh, welcome people and to employ people from all over the world has been part of the origin of the company mm -hmm. uh, in 1950. This multicultural approach has been uh, at the root of the company, as it's still obviously a key value for us. It then becomes a know-how. Mm -hmm. How could people from various nationalities can work together? If those people, our geos, are around 25 years old, if, as it is the case, they are selected on their way of being, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed by the fact that our teams in our resorts are from 15 to up to 30 nationalities, especially in Asia. They are from any religion, origin, and, and they work happily together. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, when I, we look at them, they, they, they learn from their difference. Mm -hmm. They want to learn from their difference. For, on the customer side, one of the reasons, well, to be very straightforward, why we moved upscale was that when you are speaking nowadays to affluent families and millennials, they are in an open world. Mm -hmm. And not only they accept to have their vacations with other nationalities or cultures, but they think that there is a benefit to it, mm -hmm. and especially for the kids. In our many clubs, uh, we have kids from, I don't know, five, ten, maybe more nationalities. They spend the week together, or three days, four days. They do activities, flying trapeze, scream, sailing, whatever, preparing a show. They don't speak the same language. They may have not ever been outside their own country. When they have finished their holidays, they have more than learned something. They have 
part of, uh, of, the, of the world. And, and, and for that, it's a great benefit for the family. Yeah. Well, I really do think that you are raising the next generation of global citizens. And uh, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.